Next, we will discuss the rules of probability in the context of continuous random variables, in the same way we did it earlier in the context of discrete random variables. By the definition of the probability density curve, the total area under the curve is equal to 1, and since the area is associated with the probability, we have the first rule. The first probability rule states that the total probability is 1. Let's find the probability of x being equal to some number c. By definition, the probability of x being equal to a value c is the area of the line segment above the value c under the probability density curve. Since line segments don't have areas, the probability is equal to 0. The second probability rule for continuous random variables states that the inequality doesn't matter. In other words, the probability of x being less than a number is the same as the probability of x being less than or equal to that same number. The same holds for a greater than inequality and two-sided inequalities. Looking at the probability density curve, it is easy to observe the relation between the following probabilities. The conclusion is that the sum of the two probabilities is equal to 1. The third probability rule for continuous random variables is an alternative statement of the well-known complementary rule. It allows us to find the probability of an event if the probability of its complement is given or easier to find. To discover the next probability rule, let's consider some values a and b and the following probabilities. It is not hard to observe the relation between the probabilities if we look at the areas. The sum of the blue and green probability is the same as the probability in red, from which we derive the next probability rule. The last probability rule for discrete random variables is called the subdivision rule. It allows us to find the probability of an event described by a two-sided inequality, if the probabilities of two cumulative events are known or easier to find. We derived the probability rules in the context of continuous random variables. You might have noticed that with a few nuances, these rules are the same as the ones we derived for discrete random variables, so they should be easy to relate to and remember.